when I fucking got upstate, I was just fucking confused as a motherfucker. These dudes are walking around fully blasted, supposed hard individuals, supposed, but doing what's easy 24 seven, sleeping in when they could, trying to get out of working out and, and actually going hard, seeking vices, fucking using drugs at every fucking turn to numb their pain instead of handling it head on like a real motherfucker. I saw all these weaknesses and I saw how fucking net, how just disgusting it looked to me. And I had to expel all those weaknesses from my life. So I quit using everything. I held myself extremely accountable to the things at which I saw as negative traits someone possessed. So the eating of snacks and getting fat and fucking feeling like shit, actually being physically soft. So just over time, I saw that the definition of what people saw as hard was so fucking flawed because everybody was just consistently doing what was easiest for them. So how is that the definition of hard? So I went the opposite route. I turned down the snacks. I turned down the drugs. I truly pushed myself in every fucking workout. And I just, I just knew I could create something that, that these dudes hadn't seen before. You see, the key to self-mastery is through what we ingest. If we're consistently ingesting shit that we regret, if we're consistently ingesting shit that causes us to fucking fill our heads with negativity, if we're consistently acting in a fucking manner that we cry about later, like these supposed tough guys, myself included, this was a self-realization I came to that was painful because I was one of these people. I was one of the top people like this, looking a certain way, acting a certain way, but truly being soft on the inside when I needed to be hard, when I needed to be a real man. So as I saw this going on, I would consistently push my people to be their strongest. I would create assets around me because that was the only way I was getting out of that situation alive. In a situation like the pen, Cali inmate, GP, you're falling if your people fall. If you go down, I'm going down with you. So I have, to, I have to create strengths upon everybody around me. I have to expel their weaknesses. And so how do you do that? You cannot possess them on your own. The second you possess what you're telling someone to quit, you're a hypocritical motherfucker, and you need to really look within and realize that you're doing exactly what you're telling people not to. But the thing was, is that to consistently see these supposed tough guys putting themselves in situations that they regretted, that caused their families pain, that fucking caused them pain, and just consistently always saying, I'm gonna change it, I'm gonna change it, but not being strong enough to change it. I just saw that as such a weakness and such so bitch made that I fucking, I really had to separate myself from that type of behavior. Don't get it fucked up when you don't think the rules which garner respect for us as individuals are non-negotiable. These are, these are not negotiable terms. We know what we respect or not. Do you respect dope fiends? No, you fucking don't. Nobody does. And this is the fucking thing. Why are we so confused? Why is the definition of hard so misconstrued to where a kid goes and blasts somebody and then goes and cries about it? Oh, hey, real hard. That was real hard. You look real hard in tears right now. You look real hard. But the thing is, is a lot of these guys will never change. They'll always say they will. And I, and the, the thing, I just hope that they fucking find it one day. I mean, I've met some of the best motherfuckers, some of the downest motherfuckers. I mean, my boy Charlie Brown, this fool is an old school cat. I mean, they got him on paperwork as an AB affiliate, the whole nine. He's from Modesto. He's a white boy. Motherfucker has, makes my arms look small. They got to bring out the, the attachment for the blood pressure machine when they're taking his shit because he got 23s, you know. And this fool is the OG cat. He's got the, um, he's got the 500 club record for all, all lifts at Folsom. I mean... This motherfucker was like, it was like a father to me. He was super OG and he, he would always put me through game, but, but then he would slip on the same shit that he would tell me not to do. And, and that, that do as I don't do as I do, do as I say type shit is lame as fuck. So when I finally got into a position where I was helping my people, I lived by my fucking word. And that's what I do out here. That's what I do on my Instagram page. That's what I do with my coaching. That's what I'm trying to show people is that these are actions. These are not fucking mere words we say. These are not books we fucking read. Quotes 
are the wisdom of the ages. But when you fucking agree with a quote or a saying or a phrase or some motivation, if you don't apply that to your motherfucking life, you will fall under what is called the law of diminishing intent. That just means that every time you don't see something through that you intend on doing, it makes it harder and harder and harder for you to do it. So when I got to the point where I needed to quit, I cut, I cut everything cold turkey and never fucking went back because I'm aware of these laws that exist in the universe because I watch it happen. You can't watch something like karma happen all the time and not fucking believe that it, that it exists. If a man is fucking right, his world will be right. And I take the right road now, and let me tell you, this works. That other shit doesn't. A hundred fucking times I'm gonna have to tell you guys, I'm that motherfucker. That's why I look like this. I blast motherfuckers. I done the whole nine. You check my paperwork. I did the fucking 10 years. I did the fucking assault with the fucking deadly weapon. It caused the massive injuries and took everybody's shit when I wanted it. When I got high and became a fucking idiot, the mask came on. The whole fucking nine. But what the fuck, man? I got another chance now. They gave me another chance. They gave me another chance. And I'm going to take it. A lot of people don't. A lot of people fall back into that same bullshit. And you know how much more pain it causes you when you continually, when, when you get older and you know you shouldn't do shit and you continually fucking do it, the pain gets greater and greater. It doesn't lessen. It's almost less when you're younger, but I still will always stress the fact that, that it's more simple than we make it. It's golden rule type fucking shit do on to others. Nobody wants that negativity thrown on them. Nobody wants the old me at their doorstep. So I'm not going to create an old me next to me. I'm not a fool. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to create assets around me, everybody on my team, all my friends, my family. I'm going to push them the advice that worked for me. A lame ass motherfucker does the opposite. Takes people down the road that he know ain't even working for him. I don't even understand it. But the thing is, is I've been around plenty of the fucking heavy hitters. And, and the, the greatest OGs that I've been around, they always tell me, Wes, stay out. They'll even say, hey, guess what? If you come back, I'm going to be pissed. And they're not saying it like I got something coming. They're going to be like, they're like, I'm going to be disappointed that you ruined that chance you had. That chance had a new fucking life. I seen so many people get their lives taken in the pen. Northerners turning people into pin cushions for fucking, they can't use dope. Motherfucker gets caught using dope. They're on that motherfucker poking him for fucking 30 minutes. Sick ass cops want to see that shit happen. Motherfuckers are at the window looky loo in that shit. And here I am sitting back like, God damn, dude. Act like you've seen this shit before, you new ass motherfuckers. All this shit is always going to be repetitive. It's always going to play out. And don't think because you're, don't think you're ever protected. Okay, I seen a fucking old ass black fool and another dude are getting an argument with a youngster. And he told the youngster, he said, don't go to fucking sleep tonight. This is at a level two. And what you guys don't understand is when a motherfucker comes into a Cali pen with 10 years, he starts level fucking four. If his charges were like mine are, you start level four. Okay, especially back then when the point system was 48 points level four, you start level four, and if you don't get in trouble, you slowly drop. I've seen a kid come in level three, and off of window cover write-ups and a few dirty drug tests from weed in-house, get himself to level four, get himself to Salinas Valley. Fuck his life up. But the thing is, that back to the story about the black folks, the dude told the dude, don't go to sleep tonight. This is a level two. And he's telling the other fool, you already disrespected me. Don't go to sleep. The youngster thinks he's just bullshitting because he's a shot out older dude who, who can't really do nothing physically. The motherfucker goes and grabs the steel drain, the steel drain from the showers. He goes and grabs that motherfucker. Okay. The, it's 10 pounds, eight pounds sharp as fuck. He grabs the steel drain. He puts it in a shower bag, a mesh bag. Okay. And this motherfucker's sleeping. And all you do is you talk shit about a level two. You've probably never seen this at one. But he's, the fucker's sleeping. And the dude twists the fucking the shower grate up in a fucking bag. Like a fucking... 
and he just whacks the fool in his face while he's sleeping about five times, okay? That was one of the most sickening things I've ever fucking seen. I think the fool was, name was, it was YG or KY or something. Motherfuckers who were at that spot with me, go ahead and throw that shit in the comments. You know that shit was sick as fuck. But I mean, I've seen the fucking worst shit and they all regret it. That dude, he's not getting out. Do you think he fucking wished he did that shit? I mean, you, this type of shit, the knowledge we possess, the people we are, it is instilled in our soul through life. You can't learn it through books. I can't tell you about the pen and have you learn about it. It's not a fucking Nat Geo episode. You don't want to experience that. That's the most pain you'll ever feel. When the, when the judge tells you, you just get sentenced for 10 and your chick's pregnant in the fucking courtroom, they throw you back in the holding tank. You just got 10. That fucking stupid ass Avatar movie's playing over and over and over and over. And you're just sick to your fucking stomach. I just got fucking 10. It don't even seem real. And then they send you over to CJ. You're waiting. You talk to your neighbor. Fool's name's Brown from Logan. Doing doing 11. He just came off 11 in the shoe. He said, Wes, you got it. Wes, be strong, man. This is going to be a rough trip for you. He gave me some good advice. He's like, I'm going home, but I'm getting out of state. I'm getting out of here. This place will wash you so fucking quick. And guess what? I'm sitting there. I'm sitting in CJ. We're in SEG. I'm getting transferred. I'm about to go upstate. I came from Vista, and I, then I went to CJ, which is downtown jail in, in Dago. And, uh, and Frosty's there. Frosty from, uh, from um, IB Rascals. And he just, caught, he just caught life. He just caught a hot one. He told... Every night, that fool would just be doing burpees. Thum, 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 thum. This fool was a fucking 260-pound white boy with red hair. Tatted with snowmen all over his shit. I be rascals. Boom, 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 boom. Crazy-ass motherfucker. Big-ass fool. He said, Wes, I'm, go I'm hitting the foyer right now. I, I got a lot of enemies. It's going to go down. What do you want? Make your choices. You got them. All day, every day, you got choices. You could end up like me. You could.